In 1879, British archaeologist Wayneman Dixon successfully retrieved a number of mysterious artifacts from within the infamous lower northern shaft of the Great Pyramid of Khufu. One of these artifacts was a small piece of a square wooden rod which has since disappeared, the only artifact to conveniently go missing and the only artifact which could have produced an accurate dating for what seems was a rather elaborate prior attempt to overcome a sophisticated array of blocking stones and vertical passageways which confront all who try to breach the innermost sanctums of this mysterious pyramid. The reason for this past mission, or indeed who undertook such an attempt, remain a mystery, but their motive will soon become clear. One of Wayneman's other finds, resembling a small grappling hook with two rivets, matches two holes in a square rod still lodged up in the vertical northern shaft, clearly left by these wannabe tomb raiders. It seems that these highly talented, acrobatic grave robbers couldn't make it any further, and once one becomes aware of the existence of a large hidden chamber built into the pyramid's design, placed just above this unexplored shaft, you will inevitably begin to wonder what could possibly be hiding up there. Indeed, it's a well-known fact that the builders of these structures were notorious for their superhuman efforts in concealment. Huge multi-ton blocking stones in front of the entrances to their kings and treasures, and indeed in front of virtually every interior shaft and room within the Great Pyramid of Khufu. The upper region of this northern shaft constitutes the last remaining unexplored areas due to the impossible access angle. We know it's there, and all we have to do is apply existing technology in getting in there, Rudolf Gattenbrink told the press. It must be noted, although the mention of tombs has been made, the evidence to suggest such is based solely upon a number of parchments and a single mark found within an interior chamber of the pyramid naming a gang and the 4th dynasty Egyptian pharaoh Khufu. Egyptologists have taken these fragmentary factors and concluded that all pyramids were therefore built as tombs, the Great One being built over a 10 to 20 year period, concluding around 2560 BC. It seems the entire thesis of ancient Egyptian legacy is built around a few mentions of the pyramids as tombs. No mummies or burial artifacts except a tiny box claimed to be that of the sarcophagus of Khufu has ever been found in the pyramids. Additionally, and perhaps more importantly, Khufu's Egyptian civilization, along with all subsequent and prior dynasties, catalogued tremendous details regarding their existence, yet all, for some reason, seemingly forget to mention the construction of the biggest, most mysterious structures on Earth or indeed how they did it. What could there possibly be hidden within this chamber? This unexplored and clearly sought after secret room, a room which is seemingly unrobbable. With mainstream Egyptologists, archeologists and academic historians alike insisting that these amazing pyramids were once unquestionably tombs which were robbed completely over the millennia. Whatever this room contains, may settle this once and for all. In 1995, a curious fellow by the name of Mike Markham attempted to build a time machine in the porchway of his home in Stanbury, Missouri. His invention consisted of a mysterious machine with inner workings he had concocted in his mind, all centered around an electrical Jacob's ladder. His device used a modified compact disc laser which reduced air resistance between the two poles, although it included an unusual arc when turning on the device. There was a heat anomaly created, appearing in a circular vortex-like form. After documenting this, he decided to throw a small metal screw at the anomaly to see the effect. He claims that he witnessed the object disappear for about a half a second, then reappeared a few meters away. With the help of donations, his next project was to make a larger, more powerful machine, one capable of allowing himself to attempt a plunge into the anomaly himself. While the original engine ran at a kilowatt, this machine was designed for 3 megawatts. Also, Markham installed a rotating magnetic field, similar to those used by the US military in the Philadelphia experiment. 
He believed that the rotating magnetic field was more effective and efficient. His undertakings predictably gained public notoriety, and he had appeared in the media discussing his invention and indeed intentions. Art Bell had Mike on twice. In the later interview, Markham claimed to be experimenting with a more sophisticated machine, going on to state that the electromagnetic vortex was now big enough for a man to walk into. Then, in 1997, he disappeared and was never seen again. Interestingly, people who have been fascinated by this story, its series of events, and Mike himself dug into death records and finds that could have been connected to him indeed traveling through time, specifically into the past. One in particular was a find made in the 1930s. A man was found on a Florida beach crushed to death and surrounded by a strange, futuristic-looking metal device. We find the entire series of events, Mike's disappearance, and indeed the machine itself, highly compelling. We previously shared the mysterious, conspicuous green stone, which still rests at the center of a site of incredible intrigue, known as Hattusa. It possesses many advanced ancient ruins, which today evade explanation. Not only does the site contain a sphinx gate, but polygonal stone building constructed with blocks of considerable size. It is still, now slowly, returning to a geological state, a process which has taken millennia. As mentioned, along with its green stone, there are some exquisite ancient relics still present at the site. For example, the Yerkapi Rampart, built to such an incredibly high standard, an enigmatic tunnel which was built into its belly, one which spans an impressive 70 meters in length, is still in an incredible condition. In addition to the rampart, and indeed its polygonal laid floor atop, as mentioned sphinxes are present, which although often synonymous with Egypt's Giza Plateau, are found on many ancient sites. The hieroglyphic chamber, also in a notably incredible condition, although dated with the six lines of Luwian hieroglyphs, identified as being commissioned by the great king Sapaluliama II on the right-hand wall of the chamber, which describes the invasion and successes of the king, mentioning that with the help of the gods, the king invaded several lands, including that of Tarantasa. Does not explain, however, how such incredible structures were built, or indeed how such polygonal masonry came into being. A masonry technique, which must be noted, is found not just at this ancient site of Hattusa, but worldwide, making it highly likely, just like that of the other sites we have covered and indeed claimed as simply having been re-inhabited, rather than constructed by those who claim so, whom we know and can track back to with modern historical study. It is littered with megalithic polygonal blockwork, some many tons in weight. It is a site which we feel was clearly the work of a lost civilization, one whom utilized now lost techniques and technologies to construct its incredible structures. The site spans a considerable distance, containing numerous temples, castles, simple dwellings, and an impressive strategic layout one which would have deterred any unwanted guests and would have stifled any attempted invasion. Who originally built Hattusa? How was the site constructed? Although claimed as the Hittites and dated to the late Bronze Age, it is a place which we find highly compelling. There are many ancient stories derived from religious texts, which, when taken literally, are simply illogical easily disproven as that of a symbolic nature rather than literal documentation of true events. However, there are a rare few contested as literal truth, and a handful of these for good reason. The conviction is that these events left such a lasting impression on the creators of these texts and ancient scrolls that they included them within their writings. One of these being that of the so-called legend of the Tower of Babel. 
once declared as a symbol of oppression, it is now argued by many as simply being merely another symbolic myth, such as many other stories found within religious writings. However, there are numerous details which cannot escape the microscope of some investigators. And now that a brick has been found, legitimately dated to this time, and commissioned by the same claimed king, the argument for the actual past existence of this incredible structure has gained traction within even the most skeptical academic mind. A brick, stamped with the seal of the ancient Babylonian King Nebuchadnezzar II, biblically stated as the man who commissioned the construction of the tower itself has been discovered. Dr. Irving Finkel of the British Museum said, quote, when you look at the early chapters of the Bible, it is clear that some of it is drawn from the Judeans' own records. It incorporates narratives which they must have encountered for the first time in Babylon, some so powerful and striking that the authors who worked on the Hebrew texts incorporated them to tell their own story. He continued, In the book of Genesis, what we have here is a brick which fits exactly into that specific context. There can be no doubt that the stimulus for the story and the narrative must have taken shape during the Babylonian exile. The evidence could help to prove the existence of the Tower of Babel, its story written by a desperate population in exile held captive by a ruthless king." End quote. Yet, as always, Regardless of the corroborating evidence, it will, like the many other details and aspects of the claimed tower, continue to encounter dismissal by many. With even those who are convinced of its past existence, in disagreement over its original location. Logic would suggest that, if built, it was within ancient Babylonia, some 500 miles from Jerusalem. Yet some argue it was actually built somewhere else, within the Middle East. Regardless of these disagreements, we find the brick, its still intact mortar, Dr. Finkel's quotations, and indeed, its intriguing seal, highly compelling. The Liangzhu culture, an incredibly ancient, now lost, yet once highly advanced civilization, one which once dwelled on the banks of the Yangtze River Delta in eastern China. The cultural advancements of this civilization have been of archaeological interest for a number of decades, particularly due to its similarity with the growth of our own modern civilization, throwing mystery onto how this once flourishing class-driven civilization suddenly vanished. Burials were often found to have been practiced to different standards. This depended on the financial assets of the individual's family. However, Nearly the entire span of this monstrous ancient civilization's ruins lay stratified. Academia has been kept busy documenting their pottery techniques and the mastery they possessed in the manipulation of jade. Yet why they simply vanished some 4,000 years ago, after flourishing unabated from 5,300 years ago, has remained a thorn in their sides one they were seemingly unable to explain without the partial admittance of an ancient great flood, a reality which it seems they have finally surrendered to. The investigations of this ancient civilization, although not widely known outside of China, have revealed that the civilization shows all the hallmarks of the other advanced global civilizations we have been researching worldwide, most probably linked, we feel. Canal manipulation for irrigation, advanced agriculture, and many other forms of evidence, including advanced plumbing and sewage systems, all lead us to this conclusion. Quote, Yet regardless of this single innovative millennium, the Liangzhu culture mysteriously collapsed around 4,300 years ago, and the ancient city was abruptly abandoned. Exactly why has never been fully understood although many have suggested some form of catastrophic flooding led to the sudden decline. A thin layer of clay was found on the preserved ruins, 
which points to a possible connection between the demise of the advanced civilization and floods of the Yangtze River or floods from the East China Sea. Geologist Christoph Spudel from the University of Innsbruck in Austria has finally admitted. We find such conclusions, and indeed the ruins in which they were enveloped, highly compelling. Thank you.